Just FYI, everybody, this servicing is for the four-cylinder diesel engine, not the 3.0 V6, but the four-cylinder diesel engine. Hey guys, this is Josh, Johnny Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog. Today, I'm going to take you through something that's different than my normal farm vlog. So part of the farm is vehicle maintenance. Now, this is a Mercedes. Mercedes and maintenance, hand in hand, equals cash money, okay? So I wanna save you a little bit of money. I wanna unravel the mysteries of the first service on your Mercedes Sprinter van. We have 19,800 miles on this van. It is one year old. It is due for its first service. We're going to change the oil. We're gonna change the fuel filter and we're going to tighten up the rear U-bolts. I've got all the specs that you need to know to service your Mercedes Sprinter van. If you're new to the vlog, please click the like button, click that subscribe button, check out some of the other videos that we have out. Basically, I have a farm vlog. It's everything we're doing on this 200 acre farm, enjoying ourselves, getting out, having fun, cutting wood, servicing vehicles, tips and tricks, seeding grass, all sorts of stuff that's going on on the farm. That's what the farm vlog is all about. There's always something new going on. There's always something to learn here on the farm. Our goal with the farm here is to become a certified organic grass-fed beef and pasture-raised poultry farm. But enough about that. You're here to watch about the Mercedes Sprinter van. I'm going to unravel the mysteries for you. So come on along with me and we'll tell you all about it. All right? Woo! Oftentimes when you get a vehicle with this here emblem, it equals cash, it equals money spent. Now, the Mercedes Sprinter van, I don't care if you like Ford, if you like Nissan, if you like any of the other brands, I don't care what you say, the Mercedes Sprinter van has a total cost of ownership that's less than any of those vehicles. It's a diesel, it runs good, it's reliable, and it's a good van. So I'm gonna take you around and we'll show you everything. We're gonna use genuine Mercedes parts. I'll give you all the part numbers at the end of the video. I'll give you everything you need to know. So I'm under the hood of this Mercedes Sprinter van and I wanted to tell you, I am not a Mercedes mechanic. I am not a certified mechanic. I am a guy who has a farm who takes care of his own vehicles. Just because it has that Mercedes emblem on it doesn't mean that I'm stuck taking this thing to the dealership. So let's get started. All right, folks, let me give you a little bit of background. I went to the Mercedes dealership. My local Mercedes dealership is about 45 minutes away, so it's a little bit of a drive. I took my van in there and I showed them and I told them exactly what I was going to do. I wanted to perform my own services on my van. Well, let me tell you about the customer service I experienced at Mercedes. Mercedes called their head mechanic of the Sprinter division from the back to come up and talk with me. He came up and talked to me. He told me all the parts that I needed. He told me the type of oil that I needed. He told me all the specs that I needed. He told me what I could do and what I couldn't do. And what he told me not to do was do not, beyond the shadow of a doubt, service this transmission yourself, service it at the dealership. What he did tell me is that all the other services were easy enough that a shade tree mechanic could do it himself if he knows what to do and the right procedures. This van has several computers in it and he explained the computer system in it to me very simply. I was absolutely amazed at this service technician. He took me back, he showed me everything I needed to do. He even showed me this little specialized tool and I'll post a link to one of these online if you guys wanna do it yourself. All this stuff I'll post links to. All these genuine Mercedes parts you can buy right on Amazon, right out of my Amazon store. So I'll post links to everything here, everything we're using, and that way you can just buy it online. I think the total cost for all this stuff was about $150. If you took it to the dealer to do your first service, it's gonna cost you in the neighborhood of $450 to $600. You're saving some bucks here just by doing it on your own. I'm gonna take the time to show you what to do, but you can't hold me to it, okay? I am not a certified mechanic, and I'll repeat it, I am not a certified mechanic. This is what I was advised to do by the dealership. So the first thing you need to know is inside the van. There is an LED panel on the dashboard of this machine. You turn the key off, you remove the key, you set it in the seat, you close the door, and you wait until that LED panel goes off. Once that LED panel goes off, the van is sort of asleep. The van is dozing. It's sleeping. Kind of like your computer sleeps at home. Then you can start unplugging stuff. If you don't wait until that little panel 
has gone to sleep, has turned off, and you start unplugging stuff, you're gonna cause your engine to throw codes. Now I say codes, does it mean your engine light's gonna be on in the van? Maybe it means your engine light will be on in your van. Maybe not, it may not come on. But in your computer, it stores all that information. And when you go in for warranty work, they're gonna plug right in and they're gonna say, oh, looks like you unplugged such and such plug on such and such day and it had this many miles on it. This gives them information that they could use potentially against you when it comes to making a warranty claim on your van. Turn the key off, remove the key, and let the display go dim. Then you can start unplugging stuff. Let's go up here, let's get in the meat and potatoes of all this. We're gonna start unplugging stuff and we're gonna get rocking with this. I've got great lighting here, guys. Let me pre-apologize to you for the shakiness of the camera. It's just me operating the camera. It's just me showing you this, so bear with me on that. You're gonna learn something, it's gonna save you money. The oil filter is under here, okay? So you're gonna have to take the oil filler off. Underneath is a little tab, pull the tab. One-handed is a little difficult, and lay that to the side, okay? These little tabs all pop off, okay? This whole box right here is gonna have to come off. These tabs come out, everything pops out. Next item you have is this. You squeeze the little D10 right here, boop, and it pops right out. Next one is this one. Now this is different, okay? You're going to have to use your little tool. Here's our tool. We take our tool, we pop that little tab out, and boom, we unplug it. Then we'll loosen this guy up, and we'll take this entire unit off. And this is a 930 seconds. It's a 930 seconds, but I'm sure it's a metric tool also. Do not, do not use this as a toolbox, okay? Be gentle. Next item to remove is this. Just pops right up. Sits over to the side. Now you're gonna hear a sound that you're not gonna like when I remove this hose. It's okay, the dealer said it's okay, it's normal. Boom, you hear that, pop, that's all right, it's okay. It's supposed to come off. We're removing the air filter box. We're gonna pop the front up gently and take the air filter box out. And that's it, set it to the side. Here is your engine cover. In order to access your fuel filter, which is right in here in this area, you need to remove this engine cover. It is held on with little plastic tabs. Pops up, it's like suction cup almost. If this is warm, do not force it, you can easily break it. Pop it up, be aware if it's hot, reach your hand underneath, back here to the rear. This is a commonly broken item by, by a vehicle owner. Push up, nice and gentle, set that to the side. Bling bling dog, bling bling. This stuff was intimidating to me. I would have been scared to get in this far had I not had proper instruction. So inside this box is your part number for your fuel filter. Pause it. Opening the box. So inside the box, here's what you get in your fuel filter box. It is just like this. It has an electronic device in it and it has this hose on it. Basically, you just reconnect. You pull off your old hoses and you reconnect. And you have to use your fancy little tool here. It's like a ring puller, I think is what you call it. Let's drop it. That's awesome. Another item that you're going to need, and this doesn't come in the box, and they won't tell you because the guy at the parts counter doesn't know that you need these little doodads right here. So just FYI, guys, you need these little clamps also. These two little clamps. Tell the guy at the parts counter to pull up the picture and figure out what size clamps you need. And I'll show you under the hood here in a minute. You need these clamps. Here is your fuel filter. Here are the two clamps I'm talking about, and here's where the electrical connection is. Do not use hose clamps on this. Use these clamps that are designed to hold this. If you do use hose clamps, I'm told that it can cause a bending or a bowing or damage these pre-made sections, which are designed specifically by Mercedes and will cost your butt. When you get these two connectors, one of them is bigger than the other one, okay? Know that because one of these hoses is bigger than the other one. This hose here is for a drain hose. This hose is for draining water out of your fuel filter. You unhook that drain hose right there, just kind of sits here. You can hook it right there and then slide this little guy off right there. Then over into this area, take your hose off. If you're worried, take a picture of it, okay? Take this hose out, and loosen it, boop, right here. And just feed it through right here. This is the same as what's on our new filter. Now, there are clamps right here that hold this filter in place. Pops right off. And once again, this tool. Okay, release those two clips. There's two little clips right here. Then go in, take this same tool. Be careful. Make sure the end of this tool is fairly blunt, okay? Be careful. Don't poke a hole through these. 
Remove them. Just unclamps right there. The next one unclamps right there. Boom, boom. They're both released. Your filter's loose. These two clamps are loose. And now we need to unplug our electrical connection. So your two clamps, this clamp and that clamp have been released. Now we want to press and remove this plug and then we can take our fuel filter out. Do not, do not use a screwdriver to push these off. Just be gentle with them, okay? Pop this guy out from its retaining clip and just pull them back off. Slide your hose clamps back out of the way. There we go. Slide this hose clamp out of the way and that hose clamp out of the way. Remember guys, be gentle. Once this releases, it'll be kind of stuck. Once it releases, it slides off very, very easily, okay? Boom, just like that. Remember guys, be careful and be gentle. Take a clean rag and wipe any fuel that may have spilled. Once again, take your little wonder tool right in here, release that, plug, back it off of there, and there's your fuel filter. Here's our replacement fuel filter. Slide it into place. Plug in your electrical connection. Slide your hoses back on. Put your clamps on. And you're in good shape. Hoses slip right back on. Just like that. Clamp clamps back on. And then we'll put our hose clamps here. So the difficult part is going to be getting these hose clamps back on. And you can just take a pair of pliers and reapply this. Or you can put your new ones on. So the most difficult part here is alignment of these two guys right here. And you basically don't need a specialized tool in order to reinstall these. You can just take a pair of needle nose pliers and clamp them back down. But you want to take your tool, line them right back up the way they were. Take a good long pair of needle nose pliers and reinstall your clamp. Be sure it's aligned good. You don't want this to come off. We'll take our needle nose. Clamp it back on. Take our hose here, route it back the way it was, route it around right here. Use our little clamps. Clamp that guy down. Clamp that guy down. These two little silver tabs. Take this, put it on the slot. Take your hose, little hose here. And reinstall it. Fuel filter's done. Now we've got our fuel filter done. Now I know you're thinking, what about leaks? What should we do? What about leaks? So we're going to go ahead, we'll finish changing the oil and we'll plug in our sensors and we'll turn the key on and let it build up fuel pressure and check for leaks before we put everything back together. If we've got leaks, we want to know right away because it'll make a huge, huge mess. So now we'll go on to the oil change and here is the part number, Mercedes part number. Hit pause. This is our filter, okay? Let's open it. Let's unbox this filter. It's different. It's different than other filters. This is a cartridge type filter, okay? Now the cartridge type filter, also the genuine Mercedes. Now don't get the Napa, the aftermarket stuff. The genuine Mercedes has all of the little seals that you need, all your replacement seals. You don't want to go 40,000 miles or 60,000 miles or however many thousands of miles with the amount of heat that this engine puts off on original rubber gaskets. It's just not worth it. It can cause leaks. It can cause problems. You want to go ahead and solve those problems. The Mercedes service guy warned me about that. Get the genuine Mercedes and get the new rubber seals. Also be sure with the fuel filter that you put all your little clamps and doodads back together the way they were. This is all designed, well engineered, just for this reason. And I know you guys are going to leave comments about Mercedes engineering. You know, each person's entitled to his own opinion. My opinion is this is a well engineered vehicle and it requires well engineered maintenance. And that's what we're going to do. So let's get the oil change done. First, let's talk about the oil, okay? This is ESP. This is Mobile One Zero W30 ESP. ESP oil is especially designed for emission system protection. Remember that. Use it. Don't use other oils, use the recommended oil. Keep records here too, okay? Guys, keep service records, keep receipts for all this stuff, all these parts that you use. That way you'll be able to show your Mercedes dealer that you're doing your maintenance. In review, the key is off in the seat 
and the dash display is off. There's a sensor down here and you don't want to trip that sensor. So we're down here under the van. I'll show you where you drain the oil from. The oil filter is on the top. Awesome, easy. Drain it, put the plug back in, then replace the filter and replace the oil. Here's your oil pan. Here's your 13 millimeter bolt. We'll loosen that bolt and we'll let the oil out. Out comes our oil, 12 quarts. While we're waiting on our oil to drain, right here is our oil filter. We want to take our oil filler, set it to the side, and we can access our oil filter. All right, as the oil drains out, we'll go ahead and remove our filter. Now, we didn't have the right filter wrench, okay? So I got a universal filter wrench, which is not quite the right thing to do. In case you guys are wondering, this is a 74 millimeter with 14 flutes. 74 millimeter, 14 flutes. The standard auto parts stores did not have it in stock, so I would recommend ordering one and having it on hand prior to changing your oil. All right, so we're gonna loosen up here. So we loosen our filter cap. While we're doing this, know that we still have the cap off of our drain plug down there so that our filter drains into our pan. Have your rag handy for this. When you pull it out, go straight to your rag, okay? Pull it out, go straight to your rag. So here's what your filter assembly looks like, okay? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna slide our old filter off just give it a little twist, a light twist, and off comes the old filter, and then we'll put our new filter on. Simple, easy. Hang on to your old filter though, just to double check. Make sure you've got all your seals in the right place, your little rubber seals. So each filter, the old filter has a little rubber seal in here and a rubber seal in here. You want to make sure that that's intact and then slide it back on. Slide your filter back on. Make sure it's seated in place. All right, guys, so there are three gaskets on here. All three gaskets come in the new kit. This gasket, this gasket, and then the large gasket here on the bottom, okay? So we're gonna start, we're gonna do one gasket at a time, all right? We're gonna take a little flat tip, tiny little flat tip screwdriver, and we're gonna go right in here and lift our gasket. Remember where it is, okay? Don't be a dummy. Pull our gasket. Okay, there's the old one. All right, here's our shiny new gasket. Slide him on there. You wanna coat him with oil. Put a little bit of oil on there. Get it off the old filter there. Just kinda of rub a little bit of oil, a little motor oil on that thing. That way it seals good, okay? And just replace it back in the same place that it was, gently and carefully. I don't need to show you this. Repeat this process for all three. So I cannot stress the importance of replacing these gaskets. My dealer was sure to tell me it is extremely important that you replace these gaskets. If you bought a filter, from the auto parts store and it doesn't have these three gaskets on it, get a genuine Mercedes filter. I'll have all the part numbers and everything you need down below in the description. So guys, here's what we look like down in here where our oil filter goes, okay? Take your new oil filter and gently slide it back into place and hand tighten. On the top of this oil filter cap, it tells you 25 Newton meters. That is what you need to tighten this down to. You need to get a good torque wrench that reads Newton meters and a good torque wrench that reads foot pounds. Right. Guys, here's the point where I use my trusty assistant to hold the funnel. This takes 12 quarts of oil, guys. I'm gonna put 11 and a half quarts in, start the van, check the oil, and then maybe add the last half quart. Just don't wanna overfill. And once again, it takes this special Mobile One oil, ESP. All right, so the next step here is we're gonna rehook our sensors up here and we're just gonna turn the key on. We're gonna let this fuel filter go ahead and fill up with fuel and build up fuel pressure. All right, so we've cycled the key three times. My dealer told me I didn't have to do that, but I thought it would be a smart thing to do. We're gonna check for leaks. No leaks detected, great. Now we wanna remove our dipstick and check the oil in our crankcase. And here we are, just right. This engine has quite a few sensors on it and it'll let you know if you overfill it or if you underfill it. So folks, we have no leaks. It's time to put our covers back on and basically they just slip back in. There's little holes right here. It just slips back in, boop, boop, pops right back into place. We'll do the reverse procedure for putting the air filter box back on and then we'll get underneath the bottom of the van. We're gonna tighten the U-bolts up to 115 foot-pounds of torque. All right, so here are the bolts that you're gonna be tightening and it is a 19 millimeter deep well socket and that's what you'll need to do this and you need to tighten these two and the ones behind it to 115 foot-pounds of torque and there are four over here on the other side 
we're going to go ahead. It's kind of hard for me to hold the camera and do that, but you pretty much understand the gist of it. Tighten these U-bolts. They automatically loosen. This is a one-time deal. You have to tighten these once in the life of the vehicle. Well, guys, I hope I took some of the fear out of this first service for your Sprinter van. If you have any questions, be sure you leave them down below or any comments, anything, any positive comments you might have, anything that could help us out. I thank you a whole lot for watching. Click that like button. Leave me some comments. There's a little bell down there. Click that bell. It'll notify you when I post a new video. Normally we're doing farm stuff, but today we're servicing farm vehicles. So this is my farm van. Come on back and see me, guys. All right. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge.